All right, well, ready to uh, go for a dry run here with the spindles in, but uh, so first thing I did was I laid out, uh, looked at all the spindles and chose the straightest one for my center spindle and then so on and so forth as I went out, crookeder and crookeder as I, as I went out. Now, spindles like, uh, like this one right here, if you can see it or like that, it's got a just a nice kind of banana curve to it. Uh, those are great. I can just work those right in, put that curve to where it goes back. It's the S curves that uh, mess with you a little bit. Uh, so I've numbered them all, and uh, then I like to I like to put a shoulder on the three in the middle of the chair. Um, so the way I get that length is <clears throat> this was the dummy right here. Uh, so from there to there is the, where the shoulder should be because that was right up underneath the, the back. Now if the hole for the spindle is longer than what I really want the spindle to go down, then I just subtract that amount from the, from the spindle. So I only want the spindle to go into the mortise uh, an inch into the seat and that one's an inch and three sixteenths, so I'm actually going to make it three sixteenths shorter than that right there. Okay, so, and then the two, so that's the center spindle, and I marked it right there, it's where I want the shoulder to go. These are the two spindles beside it, and they end up being a quarter inch, shoulder to quarter inch lower uh, than this one right here. So. That's why I've got Mark. I've already cut the shoulders on these and uh, got them ready. <clears throat> and I was going to show you. Uh, you know, I mean, I do it two different ways. I'll just whittle it down a little bit there and make a shoulder there. Sawyer, he's got a nice little cutter that, that does a taper on it and then he matches his reamer and he calls it a hammer joint. Then he'll flare out the hole at the top and it makes a little uh, dovetail uh, inside that joint. Pretty cool. But I do a little cruder. I just run it up this this five sixteenths cutter here. That alien made me. And just go right up to the line. And then just see if it can go up into the hole. It's a tad bit tight for it. One reason is if I drilled that center hole with the spoon bit, it'd probably fit because that's exactly five sixteenths. But that uh, Craig jig bit, that pocket hole bit that I used for that center hole, is just a little bit under five sixteenths, and uh, not noticeable to the eye, but is to that. So I'm going to take that over to the shaving horse and just whittle that down just a little bit. But uh, so you're just going to make sure that all the spindles. So these spindles out here, these four are not shouldered. You're going to make sure that they pass through enough that when you're putting it on it's not going to hang up. So make sure that they'll go up through the hole floating, not sloppy, and uh, we're not going to be dealing with these uh, blind hole spindles yet. We need to know what their length is. Um, so I'm going to make this one fit and then we'll, uh, we'll put it together. Okay, so I've got the spindles here. I've got them numbered. Now, I've got them numbered 1 through 13. Now, before I was talking about the center being 1 and 2 being on either side of it. And that's the way I number through a certain part of the chair. And then, at this point, it makes more sense to uh, number it uh, uh, 1 through uh, 13 and to uh, then... I'm starting with four right over right over here and so anyway let me clamp it in here like that and there we go get five make sure I'm getting the right ones and so I'm looking down them to see where the bows are and I'm turning the bows back kind of fit naturally in the chair like that. And as you can see, I like these joints pretty tight here. 
So this one's got an S curve in it. So we're trying to figure out how I'm going to work that in. I'm going to set it off the bench and uh, put the back on it. Okay, so I've, uh, I like putting the back on sitting on the chair. For one, it keeps the chair from moving around and puts me in a good good position for it. You've got to kind of hang yourself off of it. But uh, So uh, start with the long spindles back here first. Okay. And now those kind of act like my third uh, arm. They're a little bit extra long, and uh, so it gives me a chance to just work it up like this. Okay. on and you, you always want to keep the back just a little bit lower uh, if you get the back up and trying to put it on these arm supports too soon it it won't go it get caught with you so I'm a little low right here I'm gonna have to knock this back up still a little low a little chair over right through here Okay, I'm down to my mark everywhere, and so now this is the time where I can stand back and you know look at the chair, see if your spindles are looking good. What you're really looking at is this this negative space between the spindles, and if it's even, or if one of the spindles is messing that up with a crook, then you can take those vice grips and move that thing around until it's uh, looking good and. Uh, so, boy, that's that's looking that's looking pretty good. Uh, might change this uh, this center spindle a little bit uh, here, but uh, and move it to where it's it looks like it's kicking a little bit a little bit that way, and uh, so I can uh, 
I can put. Now, one thing that might happen is if you're really tight up here and you try to move it, it'll move down here but won't up here. And you could twist the spindle right off. So I've, I've got a little mark here I'm watching. And you see that the spindle's not moving up there. So I'm going to loosen it just a little bit and see if it moves then. And it is not. I mean, I will twist that thing right off. So really, the thing to do is put your mark here and put your mark here. And then maybe you move this one a little bit. And then you move that one to catch up with it without wringing your spindle off. Let's see if I can. There we go. Now it's moving. Let's see what we got there. thing to do here I need to measure the length of these so let me get my rule okay so this is where the extension rule really comes in handy so I'm gonna put it up into the hole first make sure that it bottoms out up there and fits and then by holding on to it bring it down and rest it on top of the corresponding hole down here now not letting it slip with me Pull it out, and I'm looking at 13, 14, and 13 sixteenths plus an inch, 15 and 13 sixteenths. So that is spindle number three, and I take it and write it right on it. 15 and 13 sixteenths. Now let's see what this one is. So make sure nothing's holding it off. So 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 on that one. Oop. 16 on spindle 11. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll cut these off and fit them, and uh, then we'll come back uh, and I'll show you how I lift it up and stick them in, and we'll have a complete dry run, hopefully. All right, so I'm just going to knock this back up a little bit and uh, stick these in.
Okay, so this one looks like it's going to need a little help going in. This one slid right in. So I'm going to bevel this top just to help. And I think, I think now to go. position. So if it's not getting to your mark somewhere, then you probably know that it's hanging up, that you maybe cut it too long or something. Um, but this one okay this one's on all the marks and uh, spindles look good so I'm going to go ahead and mark all their positions and uh, Next thing we'll do is glue the thing up.